get your Bibles out with me this morning. Let's turn to the book of Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Just hold your place there. Hallelujah. Romans 3. We'll start reading in a moment in verse 21. The Bible says in Romans 1.17, The just shall live by faith. How many of you know that you're born again this morning? Would you raise your hand? You know you're saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Saved by grace through faith. When you got saved, what God did was give you a measure of faith. It's a gift from God, a grace. Uh, The grace of God gave you a measure of faith. And because of that faith is a gift from God, now you've got to live by faith. God gave you the ability as a believer now to live by faith. The moment you got saved, He gave you as a gift a measure of faith. That's what the Bible says. God has given to every man a measure of faith. And that's how you got saved. You, you went down, you gave your life to Jesus, maybe at an altar, maybe in your car, maybe in your bedroom, your living room, somewhere. You gave your life to Jesus. You said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. You've got to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead or you cannot be saved. Why? Because being saved means you're asking Jesus not just to forgive you of your sins, but to come live in your heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Are you with me? Amen. And now Jesus comes, lives in your heart. And now you can cry, Abba, Father. Now God is your Father because His Son comes and lives in your heart. And now you are born again of that incorruptible seed, the Word of God. Can I get a witness? Come on. Come on. You can praise God about it. You can... You can shout a little bit about it. You can stomp your feet if you want to about it. But you are now born again. And now with that measure of faith, the just shall live by faith. How many are with me? Now it's up to you what you do with that measure of faith. You can grow your faith. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. But God has given you as a gift a measure of faith, and you have been born again with that measure of faith. But now you can grow your faith. You can increase your faith. You can multiply your faith by hearing the Word of God. And you just won't now just have a measure of faith. You'll have strong faith. You'll have mighty faith. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. You can grow your faith. Hallelujah. And in growing your faith, you will come to have faith in certain things about God. Faith in certain things that God says belong to you. And one of those things that you put your faith in is the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. What you do is you grow in faith. You have a measure of faith. You know that that measure of faith, you believe that you were washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But as you grow in faith about the blood, you learn that the blood can do a lot more than just wash you from your sin. Can I get a witness in this place? So Romans chapter 3, let's look at these scriptures very quickly. And let's see what the Bible says, Romans 3, 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, up to unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation or a place of mercy through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I put my faith in the blood. That's how I get washed. I put my faith in the blood. And I get born again. When I put my faith in the blood, and that faith is a gift from God, a measure of faith, 
When I put my faith in the blood, then God Almighty Himself, through Jesus, declares me in right standing with Him. Doesn't matter what I've done. Doesn't matter what I've, what I've been through. Doesn't matter how bad I was. When I put my faith, that gift from God, that gift of faith, that measure of faith, when I put it in the blood of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, God Almighty Himself, no matter how bad my past is, no matter what done wrong, no matter what anybody thinks about me, God Himself says, I am righteous or I am in righteousness standing with Almighty God. Somebody shout amen. Get a little bit excited about that with me. Get a little bit excited about that with me. Now that righteousness is not my own righteousness because I haven't been. What it is is the righteousness of God. God gives me his own righteousness. He's never sinned. He's never done anything wrong. He's never lied. He's never failed. He is the righteous almighty God. And what he does is he gives me his righteousness. And in that I have now fulfilled the righteousness of the law in which I could not obey. And that comes through the gift of faith. Come on, a measure of faith. If you're saved right now, you have a measure of faith. Everybody say that. I have a measure of faith. Now you can increase that faith. You can grow that faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can grow your faith. And then when you have faith, you can say to anything, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe with your mouth what you say, you will have whatsoever you say. You can increase your faith. Come on. God, the measure of faith caused you to say out of your mouth, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised him from the dead. You couldn't have said that three weeks before that, but God gave you a measure of faith when it hit you, when it got to you. You said, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin and he rose from the dead on the third day. It just hit you. You believed it. You said it. Oh, Good God Almighty. And you got saved. I said, and you got saved. And you are saved by grace through faith, through faith. And that grace and faith is not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So you and I can't boast anything about it at all. God gave us the grace. God gave us the faith. We believed it. We received it. We said it. We got it. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I got that. Hallelujah to God. Woo. I got that. Don't you wish now you'd have wore some tennis shoes to church? Glory to God. Oh, my heaven. Hallelujah. So God had said forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. So what I do, ladies and gentlemen, is that I want to grow in faith when the Bible tells me to direct my faith. Like the Bible says, through faith in the name of Jesus, Acts chapter 3, a man that had never walked got up and walked through faith in the name of Jesus. How do I get more faith in the name of Jesus? I read scriptures that give me faith in the name of Jesus. Let me just, nobody's going to have to turn there. Let me just throw one out to you. Philippians 2. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I have the measure of faith. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I increased my faith in believing in the power of the name of Jesus. So what I'm going to do today is help you increase your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. The power of the blood. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. 
Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. Now, I need you to open up your heart right now. I need you to get ready to renew your mind to something. Renew your mind to what I'm fixing to tell you. You can only be, you, you may have faith in your heart, believe it in your heart, but you're going to have to get that mind transformed to the ideal and the thought of it. Come on. Because if your mind doesn't transform, the doubt about it will stay here. You're trying to believe it here, but doubt about it up here, and that doubt and faith will war against one another. So you've got to transform your mind, and you've got to believe it here, and you've got to believe it here. Yeah. Have y'all love me now? Say amen. amen. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, this is the story of Judas after he has betrayed the Lord. He comes back to the very court that he has betrayed the Lord to, and here's what he said. Then Judas, which had betrayed Jesus, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and to the elders. Look at the next verse, verse 4. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? Thou see thou to it yourself. I have betrayed innocent blood. Now this is where we're going to start our journey this morning in you and I having more faith in the power of the blood of Jesus. Judas said, I have I have betrayed innocent blood. Now that word innocent there is the Greek word that means unpunished. I have betrayed unpunished blood. I have betrayed a person whose blood is not punished. His blood is completely innocent. How many of you with me? Say amen. amen. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, a part of their punishment is that they were punished with a curse. Yeah. They were punished in their body. That brought sin and sickness and disease. In fact, it was punished all the way down to their blood because Leviticus says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yeah. Have you with me? Say amen. amen. So every human since then was born with blood that is punished because of sin. Yeah. Our blood is where our life flow is. Our blood is what cleanses our bodies. Our blood takes the ash out of our body. Our blood takes fuel from food and runs it through our organs and our muscles and our heart. Every 23 seconds, blood flows completely through your body. Every 23 seconds, it has gone from your head to your feet and back up to your heart. Every 23 seconds. In that 23 seconds, your body is so power packed that it cleans up every toxin, every spit of ash out of your body, takes it into your liver and things so that it can cleanse it cleanses your blood then runs and picks up fuel in your body and takes it all to the other parts of your body so the life of your flesh is in your blood if I cut myself and my blood runs out it doesn't matter what you do for me because my life of my flesh is in my blood my blood brings oxygen to my body. My blood brings healing to my body. If I get a sore, those white, corp those white cells begin to fight that uh, sickness, that disease, that cut. It begins to try to bring healing. Everything is in my blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Can I tell you that every person that has ever been born, their blood has a punishment against it. Are you with me now? That's why the Lord says, all people, all children get their blood from their daddy. All people get their blood from their daddy. That's why Jesus says, the sins of the fathers will come down through the children. Because it's from the father's blood. Have you with me? Say Amen. It passes down just like that. Are you with me now? Yeah. I'm really going to listen to me really intently right now. Jesus came, and when he did, he had unpunished blood because his seed was the Word of God. Yeah. Your seed was created from a seed of a man and a seed of a woman. Neither one of those seeds had blood in it, but it had the capability when they came together to create a blood flow and a bloodstream. 
And within a matter of less than two weeks after these seeds come together, blood vessels begin to form in the body. And blood begins to be created inside the body of a human little child because these two seeds come together. Two seeds came together 2,000 years ago. The seed of the Word of God to the womb of the woman, it created blood from the Father. The Father was Almighty God, and it created a blood flow that is absolutely precious. It has never been punished. It is not underneath the curse of the law. Nobody's told you this, but the moment you got saved, you got a seed, a new DNA, a new blood flow. And the new DNA can change the old DNA. The new blood flow can overcome the old blood flow. Because now you have some new things to think about, new ways to walk, new ways to talk, new ways to act. Behold, I make all things new. Y'all love me now, say amen. Oh, you with me now? So I have betrayed unpunished blood. Oh, this all of a sudden is going to change our mind today and we're going to grow in faith about the power of the blood that it is not punished blood like my blood is punished. Some people out there need blood transfusions. Some people out there, their blood is, you know, right now, even you and I in this building without Jesus Christ, we're not going to depend upon our own blood. We're going to depend upon the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Every drop of blood he ever shed is still flowing right now. Every drop of blood Jesus ever shed is still flowing right now. It was not lost in the ground. It has not been contaminated by cleansing sin. Just like your blood and my blood is washed through a filtering system. His blood has the Word of God in it, and the Word of God keeps His blood absolutely perfectly pure. I plead the blood. Have you with me? Not my own blood, but the blood of Jesus. Try it with me, the blood of Jesus. The Bible tells me specifically to have my faith in his unpunished, uncontaminated, innocent blood. Come on, are you with me now? Hallelujah. Blood is such a powerful force that you can take if, if our blood types match. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. His blood can come inside my body. My blood can come inside his body and give him life, keep him alive, keep me alive. That's the power of our contaminated blood. But how much more shall the blood yeah. of Jesus yeah. through the eternal spirit who offered himself unto God purge our conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God? So I want you to see the blood of Jesus in a brand new light. It is not punished. It is not contaminated. It's absolutely innocent and it's more powerful than your blood and my blood and it flows in the body of Christ. We have been baptized into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you get into the body of Jesus, by faith, the blood of Jesus continually now flows in you and through you. It keeps your spirit man alive. There is no life without blood, and that includes spiritual life. There is no physical life without blood, and there is no spiritual life without blood. And the blood of the spiritual life is the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lord, the blood of El Shaddai, the blood of the Almighty God, the blood by the Word of God, the innocent blood, the pure blood, the holy blood of the Lamb. Every time I've gone to cast out a devil, I begin to instantly speak the blood of Jesus. I've had them, I've had women in a man's voice tell me, don't say that. Don't say the blood. Don't say the blood. And I tell them, shut up. I'm going to say the blood. Every time I use the blood, the people get delivered. Glory to God. Yes. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. If you got the gut, say it with me. Satan, the blood of Jesus. Oh, give God a crazy praise.
It amazes me just because maybe you think you've never heard it. You're resisting it. I just gave you to it. We have betrayed unpunished blood. That's just what he said. Don't you betray it. Accept it by faith. Keep going with me. Hallelujah to God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as you know, you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the vain conversation received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood, with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Come on. He had no punishment, no spot, no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish, no nothing, because his blood was innocent blood. His blood is precious blood. So if you look that up in the Greek, it means his blood is honorable blood. Our blood was dishonored because of the fall of man. His blood is honored because he came to redeem us with his blood. It is costly blood. It is precious blood. It is holy blood. Can I get you to put your faith in the power of the blood? I took out some old books. I got some old books from old people of faith that believed in the blood. I read one where a woman had a horrible scar on her body and began to put her hand on it and say, I claim the power of the blood of Jesus over that body. And within 30 days, that scar that had been there for years was completely gone. I read stories of children that were completely, completely paralyzed and the blood, the blood of the lamb began to be confessed over them and they told the blood. Faith in the blood means it's your faith. Your faith makes you whole. So your faith takes the blood that was given to you. So your faith with the blood of Jesus, your faith that came from the word of God along with the blood of Jesus that came from Jesus is now your blood to use so you take your faith and that blood that he gave you and you can appropriate it and they appropriate it on that little child and that little child was completely healed as the blood flowed and recreated the nerves and recreated the muscles and recreated the bone structure. <laughs> William Cowper. You've heard me tell this story. William Carpel was a paraplegic young man, born a paraplegic, could not walk, could not talk. A scientist had him, kept him in a cage underneath the table. His nurses fed him. The scientist got saved, began to read the Word of God to William Cowper. William Cowper, one day the scientist came in and William Cowper, he said, hello to William, how you doing? William opened up his cage. He couldn't even control his hands or his muscles. He couldn't control how he went to the bathroom. He had to be cleaned up several times a day. All of a sudden, control came. And William Cowper reached over and grabbed those bars and raised them up and crawled out, stood straight up on his feet. William Cowper was completely healed. A few months later, he wrote this song. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And when sinners plunge beneath that flood, they lose all their guilty stains. So a young paraplegic boy that nobody thought had a brain through the power of Almighty God sat down and wrote a song that you and I still sing to this day because of the... Somebody help me out. Somebody, somebody help me out. Our lives have become full of drama instead of faith. We look more on our phone than we look in our Bible. I'm just going to wait for you to get through shouting a little while. Anybody want to shout amen? Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I'm telling you it's the precious blood of Jesus. It's costly. It's honorable blood. Our blood was dishonored through the fall of Adam. Thank God our blood still has life in it. Thank God our blood has potential in it. But we need more than our blood. We need faith in the blood of Jesus. Everybody say the blood of Jesus. Lord, I command it to flow up into everybody's brain today. And that Alzheimer and that dimension will not take any of you. 
Oh, come on, come on. Don't be dead beats. Come on. Come on, by faith. When I say it by faith, you got to take it by faith. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it. The violent say, that's mine. I take it in the name of That's mine. I take it in the name of Jesus. That's what God said to me. I take it in the name of Jesus. If he did it in the Bible, he'll do it for me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, you love me now. Say amen. Hallelujah. It is precious blood. To get your faith in it, you've got to see how costly it is, how honorable it is, how worthy it is, and you've got to put your faith in it. You have a measure, but you're going to have to increase your faith. It's your faith. It is not the Lord's faith. It is your faith. Now you're not waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on you to use your faith that came from His Word. He's waiting on you to use His blood that came for you. It's now yours. Your faith. Your blood. Uh. How are you with me? If you don't get the fact that it's your faith, you'll never get the fact that everything else is yours too. If you always see faith as a mystical, out there, magical, somehow, maybe so, rubber rabbit's foot has something to do with luck, you will never get it. It's got to become your faith from His Word. And because it's yours, you've got to direct it. Because it's yours, you've got to use it. Some people are waiting on God to use your faith. God does not use your faith. You use your faith. And it makes God do what your faith dictates from the Word of God. How many of y'all love me? All right, let's keep going. Y'all staying with me now? Ooh, I got a little bit of time. 1 Corinthians 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood. The communion of the blood, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So, so first of all, first thing Paul's giving us is the communion of the blood. Let's say that together. The communion of the blood. How many y'all with me now? Now, this word communion is an interesting word. What it means is, is that the Lord pulled you in as a partaker of His blood. There is no communion without partaking. There's no communion unless there's some equal stuff going on here. So what God was doing was pulling you out of the dark into the light. What God was doing was pulling you out of you were unequally yoked with Him. Now He brought you in and makes you a partaker of the blood. Or, ladies and gentlemen, you are now equal with, you now have equality, access. You are now a partaker of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Now, the Bible says, We that were afar off are now made nigh by the blood. You're not way out here trying to get a miracle, trying to get a healing, trying to make it. You are now as cl- you are so close to God because you are now a partaker of His blood. So when I pick this thing up right here and I take this communion, the Bible says this is the communion of the blood. Now you b- and I know that this is grape juice. Okay, some churches may use wine. I, I read a book by Mel Torrey not long ago. He was in Indonesia. He was in these places. They were so poor that they just put water in there and they'd pray over it and it turned into wine. In that same village, they raised over 200 people from the dead. 
Dr. Summerall heard about it, went to Mel Torrey and said, how come all this craziness has happened in this village out in the middle of nowhere? Here's what Mel Torrey said. They don't have any TV. They don't have any radio. They don't have any telephones. They have the Word of God. So they sit and read the Word of God together. They shout over it. They rejoice over it like they got a letter from a kinfolk somewhere down the line. And they shout over it. They dance over it. They rejoice over it. That's all they got is the Word of God. And because all that they really have is the Word of God, they're getting all the benefit of having. It'll make you stronger than you are. It'll make you bigger than you know. I know a lot of people that take a whole, oh, you know, I deserve to get away. I deserve to get away. And they're not realizing that they're just spending money, 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 which is okay. But sometimes your getaway just needs to be get away with Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the communion of the blood. So if I'm going to put faith in the blood, listen, how many y'all with me now? Say amen. I'm going to have to see it as a point of communion. That I'm to partake of it. Now what I might need to do is I might need to, I might need to give me some juice and some crackers and put me a little cup in every day. I may need to have the communion in my home and pray over it and say, Lord, until I need, I'm going to do this until I get some more revelation that, my, that the Holy Spirit wants me to have communion with the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants me to partake of the blood of Jesus and know that in that partaking that the blood of Jesus is on me and in me just like my own blood is in me. Now, what my blood cannot do, the blood of Jesus does. So, it could heal leukemia. Cancer flows through the body, through the bloodstream. So, it could heal, the, my, his blood can heal my blood, which is punished blood. Because my blood was punished, cancer can flow through my blood. But with the blood of Jesus, it's unpunished. It washes and cleanses my blood. And therefore, that cannot run through my body. So this morning, this morning, I'm declaring that that diabetes is going to come out of your bloodstream. That out-of-balance sugar is going to come out of your bloodstream because of faith in His blood cleanses my blood. The unpunished blood cleanses the punished blood. The innocent blood can cleanses the condemned blood of man which limits my life which would limit my life but I no longer live I, the life that I now live in the flesh I live it by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me which is the blood he gave himself for me is the blood And I'm going to tell all of you, this is what old time people of faith really trusted in. Was putting the faith in the blood of Jesus. Come on, are you with me now? We got way too much drama. We've got way too much competing on our lives. And it's, we need the blood of Jesus. We need to zero in on faith in the blood of Jesus. Well, what could that do to that liver in there? What could that do to my pancreas? Every organ in my body has blood flowing through to it. What would that do to my heart? What would that do in my lungs to, to put my faith in His blood because I have my own body, but I'm also the body of Christ? <laughs> Come on, am I going to be happy by myself? Come on. Uh, Come on. I have my own body, but I'm the body of Christ. And when God looks at me, he doesn't look at my own body. He looks at the body of Christ. Because in his eyes, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that... In his eyes, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And in his eyes, Jesus ever lives to intercede for me. This is not a feel-good message. This is a faith-good message. Amen. 
So it's the communion of the blood. Say that with me. The communion of the blood. Now, how many of you know you're going to have to do that by faith? You're going to have to start up a, a conversation. You can't have communion without conversation. I don't just don't wave at my wife. I talk to her. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. I don't just hold her hand. I talk to her. That's called communion. How many of y'all love communion? How many of y'all we're having communion right now in this building? So you're going to you're gonna have to do it because the blood is alive. Life is in the blood. I thank God I got the blood of Jesus on me. I thank God I got the blood of Jesus on me. By foot my faith, which is a living force, in the blood, which is a living force. My faith in His blood that now runs through my body, so it's my blood. His blood became my blood, just like His word became my faith. His blood becomes my blood because I'm in the body of Christ. Can I get you to go there? Can I, can I get you to be, come on. Can I get all you young people to think, man, that white boy's crazy. But no, really, that boy up there is trying to tell me something that the rest of my life, the rest of my life, I will live and not die. You're not thinking about dying now. I know you're young and you ain't thinking about dying. But this blood will protect you from an accident. This blood will protect you from a car wreck. This blood will protect you in every way, every shape, every form, every fashion. Thank God for the, I am covered. Oh, yes, I'm covered. Oh, yes, I'm covered. Oh, yes, I'm covered in the blood, the blood, the blood. which changes the DNA of a person. So if they say, this person's born with this, then this person says, but now I'm born again with that. Hallelujah. Come on. Have y'all love me? Almost through. And I'm not even hardly getting, yeah. I am. First Corinthians 11. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. Are you with me now? In the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This is the cup. This cup is. Is. So the blood is. The New Testament. This is not, your Bible says New Testament. This is not the New Testament. The blood is the New Testament. These are the conditions and promises of the New Testament. The blood is the New Covenant. The blood is the New Testament. These are the promises of the New Testament. Because you can't have a covenant without promises. That's why every time you tell God, I promise to serve you, he got that down. He's a promise-giving, promise-keeping, and keeping up with promises God. So when I make God's promises and don't keep them, I'm closing the door if I'm not careful to receiving them from him because of my own mentality and condemnation. Not because he don't want to give them to me. It's because I feel unworthy of them and I won't receive them by faith. Go ahead and raise up your hand and give God a thank you, brother. Come on, are y'all with me? Come on. Y'all still away? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I'll be glad when they line up to come into this church like they did the lottery last week. Let me just say that one more. I'll be glad when they line up here. To come here like they did the lottery last week. Because I'm going to tell you a secret. You can win all of those millions and still die in sickness and disease. You can still have a mistake and a mess up. But this stuff right here, oh Lord. It is life and life abundant. It will heal it. It will fix it. It will redeem it. It will mend it. It will turn it. It will pick it up. Dust it off. Get it back on its way. 
It'll take the prodigal son, put a new coat, new shoes, new ring, cover up the pig mess, and get him moving on his way. Kill the fatted calf. Have a party. Have a party. Have a revival. It'll pick you up. It'll never let you down. Come on. Stay with me now. Hebrews 8, 6. But now he has attained a more excellent ministry. Jesus now has a more excellent ministry than Moses, than Abraham, than anybody. And y'all agree with me now? By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. So my new covenant is in the blood of Jesus, and it's a better covenant than even God had with the Israelites. His covenant with them is the land. His covenant with me is the kingdom of heaven. They still get the land, but I get the kingdom. Y'all love me anyhow. Stay with me now. It's a better covenant which is established. Remember the covenant's in the blood. So it's, it was better blood than the blood of a goat, the blood of a bull, the ashes of a lamb. It's better blood which made a better covenant and that is established on better promises. Established. The foundation of the whole thing is the promises that are contained in the Word and that the Word was made flesh and shed its blood to establish the covenant so we could get to the promises. You cannot get to the promises without the blood because that's the contract. That's the covenant. Everybody say, I've got to increase my faith in the blood. So I have a measure of it. You, you hear me now? I got saved with a measure. Now it's up to me to increase it. Hallelujah. Almost finished. Hebrews 12, 24. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. You mean the blood of Jesus talks? Yeah, it do. Yes, it does. Now, I want you to think about when Jesus went into heaven, what did he take when he went into heaven? His blood. So that we could go, he took his blood first. Because we cannot go anywhere the blood has not already been. That's why we can get our healing. The blood's been there. That's why we can get our deliverance. The blood has been there. The blood bought that. The blood took care of that. Somebody shout amen. So Jesus went up to heaven and sprinkled heaven with his blood. He sprinkled heaven. That's why you can pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because anything the blood touches, you have access to. That's why through the blood, you can now come boldly into the throne room of grace through the blood of Jesus. Because anything that has the blood on it, you have access to. I have access to you because of the blood of Jesus. We are now the body of Christ. In that access, you lift up your shield of faith. Hallelujah to God. I lift up my shield of faith. We join our shields of faith together. Therefore, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Because now we are the body of Christ. Now we are the body of Christ. And because the blood is in heaven, I can now come boldly by faith through grace into heaven itself. I never leave the planet in my body, but I'm doing it through the body, the mystical body of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's seated at the right hand of the Father and in him I live, in him I'm, I move so I can come in there. In him I live here, but in him I move up into there. So I have access by grace into this confidence wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yeah. 
Are you all with me now? So this blood speaketh better than... What does it mean, Abel? When Abel got killed, his blood flowed into the ground and cried out for vengeance. And the Lord said, I've come down because I've heard Abel's blood crying out for vengeance. But the blood of Jesus doesn't cry out for vengeance. It cries, it's innocent, it's pure. So in heaven, the blood's speaking for you. Everything you put the blood on by faith is now talking in your behalf. Why do you think when you come into this building, you, you feel better? How many of you feel better when you get here? Because we put the blood on every inch of this place. And the devil don't want you to come here. That's why he fights you so that you won't be in this building. Works against you because you'll feel better every second you're in this place. Not because I'm here. It's because the Holy Ghost is here. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for me being here. But I would give you everything on this planet for the presence of the Holy Spirit to be here. Amen. Because if he's here, I could just stand up and say, Jesus, and everything will be all right. Because it's the Spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. From Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. How many believe in the blood? So you are washed from every mistake you've ever made. And today, for the majority of you, for the first time in your life, somebody's telling you, for the first time you're hearing it today, you have unpunished, innocent blood flowing on the inside of you, and around you is the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, Pastor, I just don't know if I can believe that. You know why? Because you've never heard it before. And you, you wish now you heard it when you was a child. Because some of that stuff wouldn't be there if you had started increasing your faith in the blood years ago. But we get too wrapped up in drama and this and that and the other. We'll, we'll miss something because something breaks down. We'll miss something breaks down and we'll miss a move of God. Nothing's worth missing the move of God. We had a couple that came to this church for a few years. They've moved off. She lived nearly four miles from this church, and every Sunday morning she walked, even when it was raining outside and cold. She walked. I said, sweet baby, you just wait and see what God's going to do for you. In Africa, I preached in churches running 15,000 people. And I'd go into the sanctuary on Saturday night before the Sunday services. And there would already be eight and 10,000 people sleeping on the floor so they could be at church in the morning. Yeah. And they'd walk 20 or 30 miles so that they could be at church on Sunday morning. Now, going to church doesn't save you, but going to church can feed you stuff just like this in the name of Jesus. And I've told my wife before, I said, if something ever happened to me, just get me in something and get me to the house of God where the blood is flowing through the body. I saw this man one day have an opportunity, and he went to the ground, and he wasn't doing very well. But I watched it before he came out of this building, completely healed in the name of Jesus. And the doctor could not find one thing. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you why it turned around. Because blood was flowing in the body of Christ. All over this place, the blood is flowing. All over this place, the blood of the Lamb is flowing. Oh, oh, oh. come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Almost through, going to be through this scripture. Hebrews 9, 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. 
He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Listen to this. For if the blood of bulls and the goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Better covenant, better promises, better sacrifice, better blood. Better blood. Your and my blood was contaminated. The blood of an animal was not contaminated by sin. That's why God used the blood of animals. Innocent lambs without spots. Because that was better than man's own blood. Until he sent the blood of the Lamb of God. Listen to this. Purge your conscience. Okay. If I don't let the blood get all the way into my memory, then it's not flowing adequately enough to take care of everything. Come here, Brother Randy. How many of y'all love Randy Heiss? If I, take a, if I take a rope and tie Randy's hand off, I'm going to cut the blood flow off. And in a little while, his hand is going to die. It will die. He'll be alive all the way back. But he'll be dead right there. And from here, gangrene and things will begin. And then that will try to infiltrate his blood system and contaminate the rest of his body. How many are you with me? So if I let it go, the blood will begin to flow. How many of y'all with me? Where I don't let the blood go, that's where the enemy is going to mess with my life. Because he knows that part of me is still dead. So if my conscience is still messed up with how bad, how wrong, how... I've made mistakes, I'm this. I've got to let that conscience get all. If I don't let that blood get all the way to my conscience, it's isn't going all the way through my life. I'm not going to forbid it to go anywhere. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me in close. I command it over to my, every, every week I take time and put the blood of Jesus on my heart, on my pancreas, on my liver, on my intestines, on my stomach, on my blood vessels, on my arteries. I put the blood on me and say, no high blood pressure in my body. No sugar diabetes. Come on, try it with me. In my body. If you've got sugar diabetes, the blood of Jesus doesn't have any sugar diabetes in it. Come on. You have your blood in your body, but you have access to his blood in your body. Or the body of Christ. Your body is alive by your blood. The body of Christ is alive by his blood. Oh, my God. And there is nothing that that blood of Jesus cannot cleanse out of you. There is nothing it cannot fuel you and strengthen you to do. Just like by my blood. And you love Jesus, say amen. Are you going to believe it with me? You're going to receive it with me. Let me believe you got the blood of Jesus in you right now because you are... You are the body of Christ. Amen. Come on. Have you know that when they have a blood transfusion, they wash the person's blood before they put it into your body. They wash it. So the blood you're getting into your body is cleaner than if it came directly from their body. It's washed. Are you with me now? And it strengthens you, it helps you, it it can help you to heal through a blood transfusion. Well, how many know that the blood of Jesus washes? It isn't washed, it does the washing. Let's live on the Lord for a minute. If my wife comes, come on, baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, a little bit louder, come on. You can put up your Bible later. You can, you can sift up your purse after a while. Come on. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. 
Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You see, if my mind and my conscience is not clean by the blood, the moment something happens to me, the devil will say, this is happening to you because... He doesn't believe, he doesn't, the devil doesn't think I believe in the blood enough to get it into my conscience. Are you with me now? <laughs> He's trying to see if you got the blood in your conscience. Listen, the devil don't mind you going to heaven. He just wants you to live in hell while you're on the earth. He wants you to live in weakness. He wants you to live in doubt. He wants you to live in all kinds of mess. He steals, kills, and destroys. The devil is not a heaven devil. Right now, he's not even a hell devil. He's an earth devil. Anybody listening to me? You can't make the devil go to hell. You can't say, devil, come out of that person and go to hell. He's not in hell. Only the Lord can put the devil in hell. You just got to keep the devil out of your mind. You can keep him out of here, you can keep him out of anything. Whose conscience is it? Your conscience. So you take your faith from his word, his blood, from his body, now becoming your blood because you're in the body of Christ. And with your faith and your blood from his body, his word, you put it into your conscience and purge your conscience by your faith and now your blood because his blood is now your blood. So, so how many of y'all love me? So if it's my faith, I got to tell it what to do. It's my faith. Everybody say, my faith. my faith. So let's say I'm struggling over here in something. I'm struggling over here in something. So what I do is I say, I take my faith that came from your word, and I'm telling you to begin to move into this area, and my faith is going to help me confess, help me to go against this with a shield, and I'm going to come against this, and this is going to, my faith because of his word. I'm taking and I'm directing it in this direction yeah. because it's your faith. Everybody say, it's my faith. How many believe it's your faith? Come on, how many know today it's your faith? Come on, are you with me now? It's your faith. It's not God's faith. It's your faith from God's Word. So it's up to you to appropriate it. It's up to you to tell it what to do. It's up to you to decide what to say with it. It's up to you to let that faith create what you say, create what you think, create how you walk, create how you talk. I'm going to take my faith. It's my faith from God's Word. And I'm telling you, faith, you're going to help me in my walk. It's your faith. I'm going to tell you, most of you don't use your faith. I love you. But you think faith is mystical and faith is God's and faith is uh, out there. But it's your faith because it's a gift by grace. I have it, but then you got to use it because it's yours. You don't say, God, use my faith. No, 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 no. God says, you use your faith. I want you to stand together with me, please. There's a little village, and I was telling Cleo about it. A little village in Indonesia. How many know that Indonesia is almost the most populated Muslim nation in the world? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But there's a village there that the entire village has gotten saved. And they have seen over 200 people raised from the dead. And the village basically is free of sickness and disease and people are coming there and getting saved and healed and delivered they're bringing their dead kin folks there and they're raising from the dead and so they asked him said Mel Torrey was the missionary that helped start this up anybody ever heard of Mel Torrey yep you can read some of his books Mel Torrey was the missionary that got in there and got this stuff got going and they asked Mel Torrey how did this happen he said well Number one, they don't have no TV. Number two, they don't have no radio. 
Number three, they don't even have a newspaper. All they have is the Word of God. And so, so what they do is they just sit around, go from house to house, stay time in each other's house because their entertainment now has become the Word of God. And the story's in the Bible. I know some of you are thinking, oh, my God, how? Uh, uh. No, 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 don't think that. It's a lamp to your feet, light to your path. So he said, how is this happening? They said, here's what we do. We go to the, we go to the funeral home or wherever that it is, and a bunch of us get together. We go in there and we say, now, Lord... If you're through with this man, just let him stay dead. But if you're not through with this man, we ask you to raise him from the dead in the name of Jesus. And said, that's all we say. And then we just praise God for 30 minutes. At the 30 minutes, if the man gets up and praise God with us, we know God wasn't through with him yet. How many people you know right now are dead, but you know God wasn't through with them yet? How many people you know are dead right now and somebody said, well, that was probably God's will. No, 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 no. That was the enemy's will. Do you love me? Let's lift up our hands and praise him again.